Welcome, fellow refiners, to another episode of Refinement, Not Retirement, the podcast that talks about refining your life in preference to retiring from it. It's a new podcast that I co-host with my wife, soulmate and life partner, Christine. She usually joins me on the show, but today it's just me sharing some thoughts with you. Christine's preparing for our next trip, which is to Eastbourne on the south coast of England for the annual international tennis tournament that we love. It's a it's a warm-up tournament for Wimbledon, which isn't that far away. So she's busy doing that, and I thought I'd just jump on here. I like to think about our podcast as talking therapy for retirees, which I know sounds a bit like We might be portraying ourselves as the therapists, but no, that's not what I'm trying to to say. I don't know about you, but I find that the process of talking things through with others helps me kind of sort out my own thoughts. For me, it's a therapeutic process, which helps me a lot. Now, this is what's been going through my mind. Christine and I We only quit our business a few months ago, and it's a business that was really our life for decades, an international uh, relocation consultancy management firm, and it just pretty much took up up our entire (laughs) entire, uh, um, time, Uh, well, not quite, but a lot of our time. Uh, since so a few months ago, as I say, we we decided to step away from that, and we are now adjusting to our new phase, this new phase of our lives, and we ourselves are learning all the time to adjust. So we're just as much in need of this talking therapy as anybody else. So. Here are some some of the things that have been going through my mind recently. First of all, let me say that the decision to quit our business was a sudden one. It sort of came out of nowhere. How did it happen? As I say, we'd enjoyed running our business. We've been doing that for the past three or four decades, and it it's been good to us. Um, it, involved us in a lot of international travel Uh, it was highly profitable um, fulfilling as well as of course challenging and frankly i thought i'd be doing that until i dropped and i think there was a sudden realization certainly in my in myself of the age that we had reached you know our late uh, 60s And it's all about time, isn't it? We don't have much more of it. And I don't mean that in a sort of morbid way, but in terms of quality time, when you're sort of nudging 70, you're thinking, well, you know, the average age of a guy is sort of early 80s, you know, in terms of life expectancy. And how much actual quality time have you got left now? Um, so I think, well, you know, at this age in our, in in this time in our lives, I find that that we're attending a lot more funerals, which is just the nature of the beast, isn't it? (laughs) And it's at those events that you are sort of put in touch, aren't you, with your own mortality. You think, you look at the box there and you think, well, I'll be, I'll be in one of those and it's not all that far away, is it? So it was that reaching that point and realizing the age that we that we had reached and thinking time what we've got left of it is very very precious and it's a diminishing precious asset if we continue doing the same things every day nothing much is going to change and and is this the way we really want to spend the, the our remaining precious years the other thing, apart from funerals, you know, we are noticing more and more that people that we're in touch with, uh, 
people in the family, friends, and so on, you know, few of them have had some pretty tragic, unexpected events come out of nowhere, you know, death of a loved one, terrible diagnosis. You know, these things, you know, we all know that these things, um, they're going to hit us at some point. There's a, there's a, there's a tragedy coming, isn't there? There's bad news coming. It's just a question of when. Uh, so we needed to we needed to take control, and it's something that we've done previously in our lives. Usually, when we've made these decisions, and they and they are they have been refinements. Some some of them we've already been talking about on this podcast, and we're going to be talking about more of them. Uh, but they've been points in our life where something has caused us to take control, and the the thing that sort of really sticks in my mind the decision the refinement that really sticks in my mind that we haven't yet talked about and we will be talking about it on this podcast is the decision we made in our 40s um in our early to mid 40s to make a big life change and that was when we decided to spend six months of every year living in southwest florida and that was you know a fantastic decision it was it turned out to be great um but it was forced on us by circumstances really uh and we'll talk more about those when we get to that particular life refinement when we cover that on this show it's the same with covid which we have already talked about you know when covid hit we had been living in kensington in south kensington in central london in an apartment in a flat and uh we we really enjoyed it uh we we always talked about one day we would move out and live in the countryside uh but we were enjoying going to the theater and any we could pick any restaurant that we liked near our home we could we could walk to that we could walk to the theater and there wasn't really anything that was going to force us to motivate us to make that decision and uh, to make the decision to, to, to escape to the country, which is now what we have done, and we love the result of that decision, it it took something happening, and that something was the came out of the blue, didn't it? COVID. And as a result of that, we we realized now is the time, you know, we, we took control. And again, that was a very, very good decision. So the same thing uh, in a way happened to us uh, with when we'd made the decision to step away from our business. Um, we forced positive change on ourselves. But having done that, uh, and now being in this new phase of our, our lives, uh, that's not the end of it. I mean, you can't just stop working and then think that somehow magically you're going to start sp spending the time that you have left um, in the most productive, in the most rewarding way. So more decisions um, I've come to realize are necessary. It's been sort of easy peasy for Christine. She's, she's just so easy to please, which is kind of just as well for me, isn't it? <laughs> She just loves being in our uh, in our home in Elmley Castle in the Cotswold. She loves she loves the home, which is great. It's lovely to see. She loves learning to garden, which is a new thing. You know, we lived in a in a flat. We didn't have a garden. We didn't have any outside space at all. Uh, she's just loving that. Um, but for me, it's been a bit tougher. And I've alluded to this before when I've done these sort of talking into the ether episodes <laughs> just sharing my thoughts with you really it's been a bit tougher for me and i've come to realize that with this diminishing time that i've been talking to you about uh you know there are choices that have to be made and the thing is there are a lot of choices which is a good thing isn't it it's good to have choice you know so all kinds of things occurred to me i mean should i do some other kind of business in a smaller way and then uh, you know I, there are lots of things that I would enjoy doing um, and also 
would give opportunities for for revenue but really i've realized that as soon as you start thinking about i've done it so many times uh, you start thinking about a new business you realize that you get back into those old ways it just be, life is going to be consumed by that i'm the sort of person that's just going to get stuck into that get absolutely consumed by it and time's going to run away and be spent on that so the other thing I, I I thought I would do is write a book. You know, everybody's got a book inside them. My my uh, my friend, uh, my American friend Randy says to me, I went to school with him, and uh, he I think he did he did something similar. He wrote a book. He said, "What's the most difficult thing about writing a book? Getting someone to actually read it, <laughs> getting people to read it." Yeah, I think that's right. You know, so many people write books, don't they? And yeah, it's another business. Writing a book, well, not so much writing it, maybe, but then that's a big job, big time commitment. But it's not just writing the book, is it? It's it's marketing it. So you're running another business effectively. Um, and the act of actually doing the writing is, although I love to write, I mean, I've always loved to write. The act, the act of actually doing that is, is you know, it takes a lot of discipline. You've got to set aside a time each day. There's a lot of thinking involved, and it, it, you might well put it into something that nobody actually wants to read. Um, and I think I think that's highly likely to happen in my case. <laughs> so you know, the other thing is 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 the podcast is this the podcast? And frankly, I love doing this. I mean, there isn't, as you can tell from this, this is not a scripted thing. It's really just a sort of stream of conscious coming out of my gob. Um, but it's it's something that I enjoy doing, and it doesn't take a huge amount of time like writing a book would. So other things that I've always wanted to sort of do, um, uh, but the business has not given me the time allowed me the time to do so another thing is music i love music i've always enjoyed music we, we've got a piano and i like to tinker around on that um i like to sing and you know i thought well now that i'm not working anymore you know because i've never been a practicer <laughs> you're seeing a theme here I'm not you know perhaps i'm a bit lazy but i've never really liked to sit and practice court, um scales and chords and things i just like to just play the stuff i like you know love musical theater play those sort of songs from time to time but i you know just haven't given it the time so i thought i'd do that but then again there is a choice to be made you know that is a commitment of time you've got to set aside amount of time each day and i'm i'm not sure that um that that is the most important thing to do so spending time with the family that is way up top, way up top. Uh, you know, got four. We've got four lovely daughters, and they're all have. You know, well, nearly all of them are having children. Um, three out of four of them have already got uh, grandchildren, and uh, it's just lovely. I just absolutely love that, and that's a high priority for me. Problem is, of course, that they're in the position that I was in when I was their age. They don't have much time. And they're working, and especially in in today's economy, I mean, they're working their whatnots off just to um, to meet the bills. So it is quite difficult. But you know, we we are we're we are making decisions and planning holidays. We've got one this year where we're renting um, a property in the south of France, and we'll all be together. And I love 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 those occasions. Our sport, which you've heard, you've um, heard me talk about on this podcast our sport of pickleball i know it's got a weird name go you know if you haven't listened to those um those episodes i think we've got a couple of episodes on pickleball one uh christine and christine and i talk about how we discovered the sport how we love it and why and so on and the other one is is talking uh, with our friend the a co-founder of pickleball england we love playing pickleball and uh, we've managed to find a place here and some we've got some great pickleball friends here in the Cotswolds. Um, people come and visit us from our old clubs and uh, in Surrey and London, and that's great. Um, and that's certainly something that, that we want to spend time on. Travel. 
we love to travel and you know we are this is going to be probably our biggest travel year ever in 2023 we've got lots planned for the rest of the year we've already done some great trips and we want to do more of that now i thought about sailing i i used to do a lot of racing uh sailing dinghies and i thought well maybe you know i'll i i will uh, learn to do more adventurous sailing and perhaps you know sail across the channel and round i don't know round the greek islands that's a lovely thing i've always wanted to do i've only ever done it in a in a dinghy you know going out for days at a time and i thought i might do that but that's a big commitment of time and i don't think it's high enough on my priority list so it's a matter matter of prioritizing we also love the theater we love to go to the theater that isn't a big commitment of time and now with this national live thing i mean isn't that brilliant you know you we, we used to have to go to the the West End or somewhere like, you know, some major centre to see a decent production. But now National Theatre is doing this thing where they're streaming things uh, directly to your local cinema. And I thought at first, well, that's not going to be the same, is it, uh, as uh, going to the actual live production. But actually, it's really good. I don't know if you saw that uh, thing with Jodie Comer, Prima Facie, fantastic one-woman show. You know, Jodie Comer's the... Uh, main one of the main actresses in Killing Eve, um, and she does this. Fan, she gave this fantastic performance as a as a, a barrister, and uh, who had uh, who used to um, who used to d defend uh, people who were um, men accused of rape, um, and uh, she describes in the first part of the show, you know, how she used her art of cross examination to destroy them um on the uh, witness stand uh and uh, um, then of course the whole show changes gear because she herself is raped and realizes things from the other point of view and then she is brilliant and it's a brilliant play beautifully written play and uh, we we've seen more national live uh productions in that way just by attending a local theater and it's great i don't know if you've seen um, hamilton you know perhaps from previous podcasts that um where i was doing a talking head thing like this uh that i love hamilton the musical and um they and i've seen it live been lucky enough to see it twice live in central london but you can now watch it on Disney Plus, the actual Broadway production with that guy who wrote it, that genius guy. What's his name? Lee Pamel, Lee uh, Manuel something or other. Sorry, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But he's an absolute genius, isn't he? And you can watch it on Disney. Uh, is it called Disney Plus? You know, this streaming service from Disney. And I've now seen that probably... I've probably watched that... Uh, six times and every time i watch it i see something new it's that good a show and i i've got to be honest that broadway production and seeing it on the screen is better uh, i mean obviously the actors were the best actors the best performers uh, on the broadway production that he was in he starred Alexander Hamilton. He starred as Alexander Hamilton. I've got to be honest; it's it, it's good because you know not only you've got the great performers, but you've also got the camera angles and stuff, the close-ups that you can't you know you can't do that, can you, in a theatre? So, um, sorry if I'm a bit of a philistine or not, or become a bit of a philistine, but that's uh, that that's the truth of it. From that's the way I think about it. Anyway, all this sort of dwelling on how little time we've got left and how we've got to make the most of it Christ christine regards me as being uh rather negative and depressing well I, I can see that i can see why she would think that but actually i regard it as i regard it as the opposite uh, i think that coming to this realization that you've got to make the most you know i i believe there's only this one life you know i'm not a religious person i have been in the past but i just i just don't believe it and i think that this is our you know our, our one life and uh that's it so it's important to make the most of it and i don't see that as a negative thing uh seeing things that way 
I think we need to keep reminding ourselves to make the most of the precious present. You know, it's so easy to live in the past. It's so easy to constantly be thinking about the future. You know, I'll put things off. In fact, we're rather conditioned, I think. I certainly was as, from a young age, conditioned to you know, not do the good stuff now. You're going to have, there'll be one day, plenty of time for you to do the stuff that you want to do. Put things off, save for the future, work, work, work for the future. You know, I see our, I see our children's ridiculously busy lives trying to uh, make ends meet um, and all the time life is flying by that you know inevitable trap door at the end of the conveyor belt of life is approaching relentlessly but the future is a vanishing commodity um, and you see that I think you well I've certainly come to that realization in my late 60s you know death is a reality and our lives as i've alluded to before can be transformed at any time they will be transformed not in a good way we don't know when that will be we never know when we're going to get bad news we just know that it is coming and for some of us some less fortunate ones it comes out of the blue way too early you know, having reached this late 60s milestone, I can say that. But, you know, so many pe I, people I went to school with, you know, they dropped down dead and, you know, things happened to them and, you know, tragedies happened, tragedies struck. And so many people just plan for their retirement, don't they, one day? And you hear it so often, you know, so then they retire and then suddenly they get hit with a terrible cancer diagnosis or something. Or they lose a loved one and poof, you know, it's, it, it's gone. So I think that far from being a negative thing, we need to talk about death more, but in a positive way, not pretend that it's this sort of, you know, far away, distant, remote possibility <laughs> It may not be. And so we really do need to focus on getting the most out of the precious present, don't we? And that's why this podcast, that's what it's all about. We advocate making life refinements and doing that as early as possible starting to make those refinements as early as you possibly can to make to enhance your enhance our lives that's really what we've been talking about that's what our whole podcast is about it's we're, we're just we're just rather than thinking about that you know that one day when when one can retire think about well what can we do now and that's what we did you know, and we were, again, we were very, very fortunate. That's what we did in our early 40s. That was, I regard that as um, one of the best decisions that we ever made. And we, we of course, went to, we went to live in Southwest Florida on a gated community, which meant we were with much, not, not entirely, but with a lot of older people. And we were like the youngest. And, you know, we got a sort of glimpse of the future there. We got a glimpse of the future of, of what's coming because uh, you know, you know, the older people, obviously, because that, that is the nature of the world, uh, but, you know, they started getting diseases and popping off, popping their clogs. Um, and I think that that was a wake up. That was an early wake up call for us. And since then, we've been making these, we've making refinements in our lives. Um, and that's, what we've been talking about on this podcast and what we're going to continue talking about um don't you know i'm I'm addressing the younger people here now so you know don't leave it too long and i would i say this to our children and i would say it to our grandchildren too don't don't leave it too long in fact i'm, I'm glad to see younger people actually are way ahead of the curve on this uh, because i'm seeing younger people that i'm connected to making decisions to enhance their lives it might be 
the job that they take, they're less inclined now to go into big corporations and, you know, that work them all the hours that uh, God sends. I shouldn't be saying God since I don't believe in God, but that's the only expression I can think of at the moment. All the hours that God sends, they work, um, at, at the, you know, at the behest of their bosses for this big corporation. And, you know, they work. so many people that I've seen in my time, you know, have been worked almost into a grave or sometimes actually into a grave. So I'm very, very happy to see younger people now making the decision making different decisions, I should say, perhaps or in many cases working from home. I'm not one of these dinosaurs that believes that working from home isn't really working. I hear them, you know, these sort of right wing media people um, who, uh, without naming names, you know who they are, who, you know, have a downer on people who work from home. I I think this is great. I, I think it's wonderful that, uh, that, commuting is no longer necessary for many people and that they can actually spend time with their loved ones and particularly with their children because i wasn't able to do that and i very much regret that you know i i see these young dads these days really really involved um in bringing up their children uh and you know, I think, gosh, that's something that I missed. You know, I used to leave. I I lived out in Surrey, um, in the sort of suburbs of London, and drove into central London every day and back every evening. Well, you had to, in order to have any kind of sensible traffic, uh, you needed to leave well before seven a.m. And uh, the other end of the day, I didn't get home until very often nine p.m. or later. So what chance did I have? <laughs> Couldn't put my children to bed or, you know, and that's completely changed. And that's a good thing. So that's enough for me. I think I've, I hope sort of, I've got the point over the things that have been going through my, through my mind and what this uh, podcast is all about, the making refinements and not focusing on one day when you'll not work anymore, retirement. Uh, do things early so i hope i've i you know i hope i've got that across and got across that why i think that uh, i see this as a sort, of, a sort of talking therapy for retirees you know and the act, actual act of just speaking with you now dear listener dear refiner fellow refiner i see that as helping me you know as i articulate in this way I sort of begin to sort my own thoughts out. It's a, it's, it's a nice thing. And that's what talking therapy is about. Um, and we, we, are, we are learning more and more from our peers, people about our age, people are a bit younger, people are a bit older as well. We are learning things all the time by talking and discussing, debating. Anyway, we're a young podcast um we've been growing our audience steadily but we need your help and um, we appreciate the help that we've had from you so far so do please like and share uh, this episode with others if you if this is your bag it may not be but i hope it is uh, we like your we love your feedback um we've been getting lots of feedback and via our various channels you can do that either privately or openly so that others can see it um, it's up to you there is a we use as our primary uh, podcast platform uh, we use spotify for podcasters uh, you they do have a facility for actually leaving a voice message which i think is a great thing i like to use i like to use um, voice messages on whatsapp don't you it's it's a night when people can hear your voice rather than just a text which can so often be just words can so often be misinterpreted whereas you miss you know you miss the warmth of hearing someone's voice so you can actually leave a, a message or via the spotify app you probably need to get 
the app to do that, but it's all free. And uh, the, you can leave a message for up to a minute if you want to, and then we'll actually hear your lovely voice, which is always a good thing. But we also like to get uh, written typed messages as well. So feel free to do that. You can uh, also, you can, well, you can share method, you can share information with us via our podcast platforms. Uh, you can do so on our Facebook page, same, it's the same title refinement not retirement uh, you can message us directly or make a comment through there you can like share and so on and of course the same with our youtube channel because we do actually um, video the podcasts uh, because some people like to like to uh, see the face behind the voice anyway it's been my pleasure chatting with you and look forward to the next time but for now it's goodbye from me and only from me bye for now see you next time